Hey everyone, I'm Liz Ferry, and today we're going to try something a little bit different. Instead of crocheting a project for you all today, I'm going to try my hand at making my own hook handles out of air dry clay. I'm so excited to see how these hooks turn out. I know that people make hook handles out of oven baked polymer clay. This is something I'd like to try someday, however I have heard that it's best to have a dedicated oven to use with polymer clay because the plastics might leak toxic chemicals during the heating process, which might coat the inside of the oven, making it harder to clean, and not the best to use for food preparation. Since I have only one oven and I can't really have an extra one just for clay, I wanted to see how well air dry clay would work instead. As always with my Project Diaries series, this is just a little experiment. I don't really know what I'm doing or whether this will work. Nevertheless, all the materials that I used for this project will be listed in the description below. So I've put out a few materials to start me out. I'm gonna try to dye my clay using acrylic paint. So I've separated a couple of my chunks of clay into these two little Tupperwares. I also have my two colors of acrylic paint that I'm going to try out first. And I also have a little cup of water so that I can water down the clay if I need to, since it is air dry. Also, just in case, I have laid out some wax paper to protect the surface of my table. And I have these vinyl gloves that I'm going to use to protect my hands from getting paint all over them. So first, I'm going to go ahead and put on my gloves. Oh god, I just ripped the gloves. Wow. Oh my god. <sighs> well, I guess I'll maybe get paint on that part, but hopefully I will avoid it. Oh well. We'll press on. So I'm gonna use my green first. Let me take some of the clay out. Pull that out. It's kind of hard to pick it up with my gloved hands but we will and then I'm just going to put a little drop maybe I'll just use yeah no I'm just gonna put a little drop of my paint oh more than rather more than a drop but that's all right I'm just going to fold it in and mix it into the clay until it successfully tints the whole thing with our color. Mix it until it's fairly consistent in its color. It does appear like more of the paint is getting on me than the clay, so that's interesting. I'm gonna just put a little bit more in there, hopefully. That will... Let's try that. Try spreading it out first. I'm not really sure what I'm looking for here, because I've never done this before. I've painted the clay and I've heard that you can do this, but <laughs> it doesn't seem to really want to mix in very much. Or it's maybe it just requires a lot of working it in, but it doesn't seem to really be sticking onto the clay very well. Well, I guess I'll just add more and hope for the best. I'm just gonna add a bunch. We'll see what happens. We're just gonna smash it in there. Now my hands are fully green, so definitely gonna have to change gloves when I move on to the blue ones, so that's something to consider, I suppose. Okay. That seems to have helped a little bit more. It seems to be mixing in more now. But you can really still see a lot of the gray in there though. Like it almost seems like it's just on top of the clay instead of it mixing in, which is interesting. It does seem to be making a sort of grayish green. Like, a, it's gray tinted with green, I suppose. You know, this green is so gray, and I assume that the gray will somewhat fade out once we actually dry it off, but it is so freaking gray. I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow 
see if that helps to brighten it up a bit. I don't know. I'm just trying stuff now at this point. Let's see how that mixes, if it does indeed mix. Okay, well that's doing something. It's changing the color of the green, for sure. It's doing something, making it less of a blue green, I suppose. Sort of a... We're sort of getting a bit of a Kermit the Frog sort of situation here happening. That's a little nicer, I think. That seems to be working a little better. Oh, 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 dang it. Dropped it on the floor. So there's probably a few hairs and things in it now. So that's great. There we go. So now... We've got, we've got it pretty consistently mixed in, I think, at this point. And I think I'm liking the green that I have now. It's more of a brighter, yellowier green than what we started out with. So now I think I might just put the green aside for now, and then I might mix my blue. So I'm going to change gloves so that I don't get any of this yellow and green on my blue and that's we'll be good to go now i'm gonna take my second container it sort of feels like i'm smashing the color into everything i feel like it's not getting any blue try putting a little bit more blue on it just to see if it seems like that changes anything like see there's stop spots like that that just make me like not understand what is happening because some of them are getting blue and other ones just seem like they're not like at all getting blue so I'm a little not sure how well this is gonna work we'll see once oops we'll see once it's finished and we mix everything together and it actually air dries how well the colors come through but yeah it does seem like it got a little bluer that time actually okay no I think it is getting bluer okay so yeah it's starting to look pretty darn blue I think I will put a little bit more it does seem like it got pretty darn blue so now I'm just going to put these in the Tupperware for now. I'm not going to leave them in there for a very long time because I don't want them to get too dry. And I have heard uh, tell that they dry out a little bit faster once they've been painted. So I'm just going to, once again, remove the gloves. And now I'm going to clean up my area, wash my hands, put on a fresh pair of gloves, and then we can try to mix these together. I ended up not getting around to making the hooks until the next day, but they didn't dry out in their Tupperware containers. I don't know whether they would have lasted another day and still worked, so it's probably best to get to it as quickly as you can. Next, I just formed the clay into the shape of a handle. I wasn't trying for any particular look here, just trying to get a shape that fits well into my hand. It didn't take long to realize that it was kind of impossible to work with the clay with the gloves on, so I guess blue and green hands it is. Don't worry though, it all washed off perfectly fine afterwards. Anyway, once I got a shape that I sort of liked, I added the hook to the clay. I made sure to try holding the hook in a couple of my preferred grip styles just to test how it felt in my hand, and to sort of form the clay to my hand while it's still wet.
and once I finished, I figured I'd use up the rest of the clay to make a couple more. I noticed when working the other two handles, the clay was starting to dry out a tiny bit, making it harder to smooth out. So I just added a bit of water and that did the trick just fine. Turns out I way overestimated how much clay I would need, and I ended up with three, two of which have somewhat excessive sized handles now. Now let's let these babies dry. Okay, so these took like two days to fully dry, most likely because of the thickness of the clay. During the dry process, the hooks lost a lot of color saturation and ended up a much more pastel color palette. This isn't a problem for me in this case, but it's something to consider. It really makes me wonder if I had never changed the color of our green paint earlier, what it would have looked like. I also noticed that once the clay was fully dry, it became extremely lightweight and was no longer cool to the touch. They sort of feel like wood when they hit against each other. Now I'll varnish the handles to add a protective coating. This will keep the moisture and the oil from my skin from destroying the air dry clay. I'll add a few coats just for good measure. And now these handles are done. But before I get to my final thoughts on this process, let's test out these handles and see how they hold up to actually crocheting. I'm just going to make a simple square of double crochets to see how the hook feels. The first thing that I noticed is that the hook is super lightweight. The grip doesn't add much, even though it looks so big. I feel like this is a plus. Also, the texture is very hard and smooth, kind of like plastic or wood. It feels pretty good in the hand, but it obviously isn't soft like a silicone or pencil grip, so it isn't what I'm used to. But it's no different than, say, a plastic or polymer clay hook. I also noticed this hook made my hand pretty sweaty, although that's admittedly pretty common for me. My silicone grip hook I use all the time makes me sweat probably just as much. The sweating didn't seem to affect the hook, though. I really couldn't say as far as long-term extended use, though. I guess time will tell. I tried using a couple of grip styles with these, but I found that these hooks lent themselves better to the knife grip style of working the hook. I usually use more of a pencil or a chopstick grip style. Either way, I was still able to work with my preferred style of gripping, but the handle just felt a tiny bit too big to keep a good hold. But this might just be because I'm not used to using such a large handle. Overall, the basic crochet square I made was pretty easy on my hands, so I tried using one of the tinier hooks to make a swatch of a lacier stitch using crochet thread. For this particular task, using a knife grip was really hard because it's a little trickier to control the tension. Since this is so lacy, the tension is really important, so I just used my preferred chopstick gripping style and it worked fine, if a little awkwardly. It definitely slowed down my stitching, as far as how fast I could go using a commercial silicone grip hook, but honestly, I suspect it's because I so overestimated how much clay that I would need to make a good sized grip. But these would absolutely work for other applications, where tension is less important, or if you're just more used to knife gripping and you don't have as many issues with the tension control. And it's definitely a lot better than using a hook of this size without a grip at all. So was it worth it? Would I do it again? Yes, I definitely would like to try it again. With what I learned from this experiment, I'd love to try some other more saturated colors to see what color they end up when they dry, and I'd like to see if making a smaller grip would make it easier to use either knife or pencil gripping styles instead of just knife. What colors do you think I should try to use next time? Let me know in the comments, and as always, if you tried out making these grips, or if you made a project using any of my designs, I'd love to see it. You can find my social media links in the description below, or tag me on Instagram at LizFairy. If you liked this video, you could press the like button or share it on social media. And if you'd really like to help out the channel, you can donate to my Patreon. You can get some cool perks from Patreon, like seeing my videos early and ad-free. You can find out more about that at patreon.com slash fairyrings. What are some other hook handle DIYs you'd like to see me try? Leave your suggestions in the comments and make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notifications every time I post. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.